So here I am on the beautiful Mercer Island in Washington. I'm at a park and ride parking lot because I was on my way to Seattle. I was looking forward to training one of my very best friends. And then after that, I was looking forward to training a group of people that I have a blast with. And then I saw some uh, steam coming out of my hood. So I pulled over, check it out. And uh-oh. That can't be good. No, that's not good. It's a blown hose. So that's kind of disappointing. And I was thinking, how bad is this? There's half a dozen people that I had to cancel on. That's bad. And I don't get to train some of the people that I really enjoy being with. That's bad. And I asked myself, how bad is this? Really, really how bad is this? It's actually not gonna be that big a deal to them. It's not gonna ruin anybody's day. It's probably more disappointing to me because I don't get to see those people. But does it, is it really worth getting super upset over? Well, no, actually it's not. On a scale of one to 10, if 10 is everybody in my family just died in a plane crash, this is it's like a three. When I think about it, say it's a three, it's really actually a two. And I texted them all already and emailed and they're, they're gonna, they totally understand. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry, oh my gosh. And it's nice to hear that people care. So that's another good thing. I mean, there's plenty of good things that you can think of, that you can come up with, that actually happen from a situation like this. And then when you start counting those good things, then you find yourself in a state of gratitude. And once you're in a state of gratitude, miracles happen, literally. That's no exaggeration. So if you wanna open yourself up for a day of miracles, change your state, get into a good state, and start thinking of things that you're grateful for. It's a lot easier to think about things you're grateful for once you're in a better state, or at least a neutral state, and out of that negative state. So then I ask myself, what's good about this? Well, I can make a video about how asking questions can calm you down. Because when you get upset and you blow things out of proportion and you get into your brain stem, your basal ganglia and your primitive brain, and you start operating in that part of your brain and things just spiral out of control and get way worse than they really are. So the three ends up being a seven. Then you're excreting cortisol all over the place inside your body. It's just spraying around everywhere and the cortisol is inflammatory and it's fattening or you can catch yourself and you can use these techniques to calm yourself down concentrate on what's good about it like this is great that i can make this video opportunity real life situation here that's actually happening a story that people can use and see for themselves how this process works and how easy it is and how we can turn a stressful situation into something that's just really a positive, actually, that can help other people. And sometimes it's really hard to get calmed down or you don't catch yourself in time and it's already spiraled out of control. So in those cases, first thing to do is just start breathing. Just remember, oh, I need to breathe because you're probably breathing in the top third of your lungs. <laughs> this kind of thing, you know, taking deep breaths. And deep breaths really do calm you down and it changes your state. And it's really all about the state you're in. If you're in an upset state, a panicky state, whatever the state, negative state, first thing to do is just break yourself out of that state. So change your posture. That's a really easy, quick thing to do. Sit up straight, assume a power posture or whatever. Just if you're sitting down, stand up. If you're, if you're standing up, sit down. Stick your chest out. Put your chin up. That's a really quick thing to do. And or, better and, to stick breathing in there. And the best breathing technique I know of is square breathing. You can do it by seconds or you can do it by heartbeat. I tend to do it by heartbeat because then you can get your own biofeedback going. So you find your pulse. And once you find it, Breathe in to four beats, then hold your breath for four beats. Then breathe out for four beats and keep the air out of your lungs for four beats, going by your own heart rate. So if you're really 
amped up, your heart rate's going to be going pretty fast. So four beats isn't going to take very long. But you'll notice as you start to calm down with this breathing, your heartbeat starts to calm down and your breathing starts to calm down automatically along with it. And so it's essentially biofeedback, immediate feedback to your brain. And it's awesome for relaxing yourself and getting your out of yourself out of a uh, panicky state. So besides just the problem of cortisol and how fattening that is, why else would you want to get out of a panicky state? Well, when you're in a bad state, frantic state, angry state, sad state, panicky state, you're not making good decisions because the energy is being pulled from your PFC, prefrontal cortex, the front part of your brain, to your more basal brain where you're just reacting. And when you're in that part of your brain, you can't make good decisions other than just reactions and kind of instinct stuff. And it's never logical because it's all emotional based. But when you're in your PFC, the front part of your brain, you're able to make good decisions and think logically. So that's a huge reason right there. And why it's so important to get back in your PFC with the proper relaxation techniques and the proper state changing techniques. How are those for a couple quick techniques? Those take seconds and they can change your entire day because if you use those to interrupt that negative state, to get back into a positive state, or just a neutral state for that matter, you've changed your entire day. It's true. Because if you had gone on that same path of being really upset and blowing things out of proportion and the negative cycle spiraling upwards, you'd have a really bad day. And this is why so many people have bad days. It's because they don't break that state. They just go with it. And then they're in their brainstem for the whole day and just reacting to everything for the rest of the day. But catching it first and then pulling out of it with a couple quick techniques like these, then you can put yourself in the proper state and you can have a good day. It's a choice. It really is a choice. You can choose to stay in that negative state and make bad decisions and reactions all day. Or you can choose to change your state and have a good day. So was the 45 minutes that I spent waiting for the tow truck wasted? No. I was able to make a helpful video. That's a good thing. That will hopefully help a few people. That was the tow truck calling. So need to drive it out to where he is. <clears throat> That was quick and easy. Not so bad, right? Alrighty then, home safe. Got a shuttle ride back from the guys at the car shop. And on the way back here, I was just thinking, you know what else is a good thing? On my way over to Seattle, if there's a little loophole. You can get off on Mercer Island and then get back on the express lanes because Mercer Island traffic can use those express lanes. So I was going to use that little loophole because traffic was kind of meh. So that's when I noticed because the car slowed down enough for me to notice that there was some steam coming out of the hood. If I hadn't have decided to take that little loophole today, I would have kept going, wouldn't have seen the steam until it was probably too late and would have been stuck somewhere on the freeway because coolant was coming out of this sucker fast. It was spewing out. I would have gone maybe five more miles tops, still would have been on the freeway, would have had to pull over on the side of the freeway somewhere, and the car, the engine might have overheated to the point of not being able to even fix it. Like God was looking out for me today, like he always is, but it made, it was obvious, which was a miracle. So. I mentioned earlier how when you set your brain in a certain direction, it'll find things in that direction. If you stand in a positive direction, start looking for miracles, then you're going to see them and you're going to notice them and you're going to remember them. On the other hand, if you stay in that negative state, you're going to see negative stuff. So it's really a choice. Yes! All right, it's fixed. Boy, it was an easy fix too. It was just a little elbow thing and the one of the pipes or something rather doohickey and Ollie here at Ollie's Bellevue Auto Repair 
That guy. Rocks. He did it for free. Remember those blue miracles I was talking about? Where you get in that mode and you start to see them and they just pop up out of nowhere? Here's another one. He didn't even charge me. I was in here not too long ago for a new water pump. Then I came back and got a new bumper because he also does auto body stuff. And he came in under his estimate on that. I just came back, of course, because he's awesome and he does great business and he's honest. And he did this one for free. So chalk up another miracle. And this, this was expense for him. I got a ride from one of his employees. They have a courtesy shuttle. And on the way back, Mike gave me a whole bunch of advice on how to get some more horsepower out of this car. Learned a bunch of stuff. Another little miracle right there. So you're talking about the time for Mike. He's being paid and there had to be a, a, some costs associated with the part they put in there and the labor that it took to... Free. It's free. No charge. Love those little miracles. Now I'm going home and I'm going to rate him on Yelp and everywhere else I can find that he's listed to say how awesome he is, which is going to make him feel great. It's going to make me feel great. Both of us are going to get a, get a hit of serotonin and good feel good chemicals instead of cortisol from having a stress day. Everybody's happier. Everybody benefited and it's a great day. Oh yeah. And you know what else? I had AAA because I figured after 130,000 miles on a car, you should have some backup protection, which was smart because it includes towing. So towing is really expensive. And I got it, but I didn't have to pay anything today because of I paid my AAA membership. So there's another blessing. And then I was thinking, oh, I better get some coolant to top it off. But then I remembered, oh, I got my car fluids done last time at Jiffy Lube and they give free top offs. So I'm going down there now to get some free coolant. And I'm remembering this stuff because I'm in a good state, in a state of gratitude, instead of being in a crummy state thinking, oh, geez, this is horrible. I'm gonna have to go buy some coolant and then going and doing it and doing stupid stuff because I'm in a stupid state in my basal brain instead of my PFC brain. Ha, <laughs> done. Just as easy as I expected. So I drove up to Jiffy Lube and there were cars in the bay and there were cars behind. There's a little bit of a line, a couple, two, three cars. I'm like, oh, hmm, wonder how it's gonna play out. So this guy runs up to me and motions me over and asks me what I need. I say, oh, just pretty much just a coolant top off. So he ran back and filled up a little jug and came out and poured it in and off I go. Didn't need to wait in line, didn't need to wait at all. Boom, done. It's true that we don't always get what we want, but we usually get what we expect. And if we expect miracles and good things to happen, even if they're little small miracles and little small good things to happen, we're gonna get it most of the time. And this great day began by what most people would consider something a really crappy incident. And for most people, they would have chosen to let that ruin their day and they would have missed all these miracles and opportunities and they would have had a sucky day instead of having a great day and making it a great better day for lots of other people. Yeah, and you know what else I just remembered in making this video was that I've got a whole ton of other brain training exercises on the X Gym YouTube channel that I can tell my group about so they can benefit now more than if I had showed up because now I've got this this resource that they can use that I haven't told them about yet. Plus, everybody else that's watching this YouTube can use that resource and look up brain training exercises on the X Gym channel. And then take this video and even share it. Pay it forward to other people. So there's a lot of really good stuff that has happened from this major good stuff that's happened from this experience. So it's awesome that it did happen. Seriously, share this and then you can help other people. Social psychologists have shown that when you help other people, then you find fulfillment. And the jobs that people have where they're helping the most people are the most fulfilling jobs, where they get the most job satisfaction. It doesn't have to be the job though. It can be just volunteer work or like sharing this video. So share it. 
and join the XGEM channel too. So there's a little tiny logo, circle XGEM logo down there in the corner that you can click on to subscribe. So go for it and we'd love to have you as one of them. Be fun, be on the team. Learn some good exercise stuff and learn some good brain training stuff and learn some good fitness stuff and recipe stuff and all sorts of good stuff. Okay, bye-bye.